Hey there, this is Stan, K9SWX, and today we're going to be talking about beacons and other propagation tools to help you determine what bands are open and where they are open to. Some will focus on VHF, UHF, while others will focus on the HF bands. So let's just jump right into it here. Um, the first one we're going to look at is the VHF propagation map, and I'll have all of these links in the description. Uh, but this is um, based upon APRS signals. And you kind of see some of these areas of colors. And the darker colors usually indicate a better, what you call opening, band opening, than say like the green ones. But it doesn't look like much is going on right here. But you really have to zoom in. So if I go, we'll go out here first, kind of to the Arizona, New Mexico. Then you can really see areas that you might have enhanced two meter propagation. So here's an orange one, which is probably really good here. If you click on it, um, sometimes it'll show you the various stations. Here you go. Um, that are hearing this. I'm assuming this is a digipeter. Um, but you see all these stations. You've got a station up here in Colorado that's here in this station way down in Arizona. So that's usually the darker areas. But if you, like I'm in Illinois, so I'm going to zoom in here. And as you zoom in, these colors will change. Like here's a green one, and then you've got some yellows. So I'm kind of in this area. So our local Digi is hearing stations way over in Indiana, um, almost down by St. Louis here. So this is kind of a pretty, pretty neat map. And you'll really notice this if you bring this website up during the summertime, um, when we tend to get a lot of well, spring, summer when we tend to get a lot of uh, enhanced propagation on like VHF and UHF too. Um, you'll, you'll see a lot, like you'll see stuff go on like multi states. It'll be red. It'll be just crazy. You won't even, you'll click on things and there'll just be lines everywhere. Cause it's just crazy. Um, but right now we're in time of this recording it's in February. So there's not too much going on, but again, there's still some, I mean, Normally, you wouldn't be able to get into, I mean, this is going into, you know, way past Indianapolis. But, of course, this DigiPeter is a really good DigiPeter. It's got a good antenna and receiver. So, but at least it gives you an idea. But, you know, if if you got a little beam or something and point it east, you're probably going to be able to get somebody over here, maybe in Indiana. Um, so that's that's one one quick tool to take a look at. If you click on this website, you can click HF, but I already got it pulled up here. Um, this is kind of their sister website that does the HF bands. It's a little different because obviously it doesn't use APRS to figure it out. Um, if you come up here and hit about, it'll tell you all about how they figured this out. It looks like they're pulling from WhisperNet, the reverse beacon network, um, DX clusters. So they're pulling from multiple sources to make these maps. But basically, uh, let me close that out. Uh, you can you can see the bands up here. It goes all the way up to six meters. And you can put in your um, grid square up here where it says perspective. So I've got, I'm in EN50. So I put that in. So it's not really showing me anything for for six meters here. But as we go down, say here's 10 meters. If you hover over these, you'll kind of see different shades. So like this shade would be, uh, it's telling me 10 meters SSB. So I, in theory, I could talk, looks like across the country on 10 meter SSB. But then CW, you've got this kind of shaded area. And then there's a digital outline. It's kind of hard to see sometimes, but um, it gives you a little idea. And then we'll go down. There's 12 meters, not much going on. 15 uh, 17, 20 meters, it's getting a little bit further, uh, 30 meters, not much, 40 meters, about the, you know, about the U.S. coverage area. Um, but, you know, it's another, another quick map to look at, and it auto-refreshes, I think they said every minute or something, so, um, that's pretty cool, but just another little quick map. Uh, one of my favorite maps is uh, DX Maps, uh, dxmaps.com, and this is really cool because they they go all over the place. You want to do six meters, two meters, go up to UHF, all kinds of stuff. But um, 
like here's 10 meters and you can move the map around and you can kind of see there's signals coming from looks like the east coast over to japan and you can even there's a whole bunch of options up here and i'm not going to go through all of them but um, if you turn on like the PSK reporter source, you get a ton. Of, it, it gets a little messy, but at least it gives you an idea here. If you zoom in, you can kind of highlight these and see which direction and uh, what these stations are pulling in. Uh, but you can kind of see, you know, there's a lot going over the pond here. A um, lot going into Japan and other countries over here. And you can just kind of thumb through the various bands. If you go over here to LFHF, you get all the HF bands. Um, so I think, uh, let's check 20 meters. So 20 meters are a little different. Not much going over to Japan, but we've got a whole bunch of stuff here. I don't know if, yeah, I've got mine. I don't, not picking up much here, but I just have an indoor antenna, so. At least it's showing up on the website. But anyway, you can kind of see a lot of stateside stuff for 20. And then there's, you know, some batch going down here and then a few going over to the pond. Um, but you can check this throughout the day and see on 30 meters, there's a whole bunch going from, looks like Florida or something down here, over to, you know, Europe on 30 so that's kind of cool. Um, but again, a lot of these sources are, you know, pulling from FT8, FT4, Whisper, I believe. Yeah, the PSK reporter. But you can switch it. You can shut that off and just put it on DX cluster. And it'll be a lot less busy map. Uh, but it may not give you the information you need unless you turn on the, the PSK reporter data source. Uh, so see here, it's just... If we're just using the DX cluster, you know, it looks like there's a few stations picking up uh, South America down here. But uh, this is this is fun in the summertime because you can um, you get a lot of six meter stuff. You'll see a lot of signals, uh, two meter, even uh, seventy centimeters. You'll see signals when the bands are really hopping. So that's that's a that's a really good site that I I really like to use. Another one of my favorite sites is PSK Reporter, and you can do all kinds of stuff with this. Right now, I've got it on. Uh, it's a little messy right now because I'm got it on ten meters. Um, I've got it set to any call in the last fifteen minutes, all modes. So you can see there's a lot going from the U.S. over to Japan and surrounding areas then you can kind of see a lot of signals going from australia to maybe japan so that's cool but um if you uh, are connected to psk reporter in any way um, you can put your own call sign in here uh, i'll do that and then i don't know what band i'm listening to right now so i'm going to put all bands i think it's 20 or 40. Yeah, 20 meters. So this is what I'm picking up. Uh, in the last 15 minutes, my little, I have a Raspberry Pi that has some software on it that listens. And, you know, it's it's decoding FT8, FT4, Whisper. I think those are the main ones. But you can see it's picked up something over here in Spain. And then a whole bunch of stuff on the East Coast. And then maybe out here, some Colorado. And then kind of couple on the west coast here uh, but that's what my station's picking up so that's kind of cool that if you you know if you're using you know like ws jtx to, and you know do an ft8 or something like that if you you can set it up to report signals you're hearing to uh, psk reporter and then it'll show up on this map which is uh, really cool uh, but you can, you know, you can do all kinds of stuff. And then again, it'll, it, you can see up here. Um, let me see if I can zoom in on that. I don't know if I can. Here we go. Um, it'll show you the, there's over 6,200 people monitoring. I think I broke the map here. but Oh, there we go. Um, there's various monitors on bands here. So mine, right now, mine's set to 20 meters and there's 1,385 
people monitoring that um, have you know they've got some sort of radio system set up so it's monitoring data modes on 20 meters that send to this website so that's cool and then you can also set this to um, grid square as well so my grid square is en50 and then this is probably going to take a minute because um, I've got it set to all bands I probably shouldn't have done that oh there we go well, that's not bad so this, these are all the signals being reported on all bands in our grid square. I don't know if it, does this show grid square? Eh, I don't see grid square. Oh, here it is. Jeez. Okay. But then I got it. There we go. So you know, I can't really see the line too well. It looks like it's this, this box here is what's being picked up or, you know, all the receivers uh, or senders, I guess. Um, but you can see there's lots of stuff on, I think this is, what is this, 10 meters? The pink is 10 meters here. So in, in my grid square, there's a lot of signals coming out of Japan right now. And then on 40 meters, a lot of stuff going over here to Europe. And then there's a few stragglers down here. I don't know what this one is. Oh, that's 12 meters way down here. Uh, so that's, that's crazy. Um, but that just gives you an idea. You know, I just usually leave it 15 or I guess you can't change it on this one, but normally it'll give you like 15, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, a couple hours, 24 hours. You know, when you put it on like 24 hours, it's going to, it's going to take a while to load and it's probably going to bog down their website. So I wouldn't recommend doing 24 hours too often, but, um, that's just another cool website. And, you know, you can also, if you're doing data modes, you can see where your signal is being heard, which is really cool. So the next site I want to take a look at, and it's going to go away a little bit from ham radio, but um, is the NOAA weather radio here in the U.S. Um, it, those, it, it's on frequency uh, 162.400 to 162.55 megahertz. And they're all over the country, and usually they're used for weather alerts, like, you know, tornado warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings, blizzard warnings, all that kind of stuff. Um, but what I do is, especially if I'm in the car, I've got all these in my radio, and I'll just thumb through, there's only seven different state, you know, diff seven different channels, if you will, and you can hear what you pick up, and they're like, oh, well, this one, I don't normally hear this one, and then you wait for the call sign to be given and then you look it up on uh, the National Weather Service's website. So I've got their website pulled up here and they've, this is a clickable map. So I'm in Illinois so I'm just going to click Illinois and it'll bring up this cool map and what I like to do is shut off propagation and these uh, let's see here well I guess we'll just go ahead and do that but if you zoom in like here's mine in Champaign if you click on that it gives you the frequency. So if you're hearing a distant station that you normally don't hear, listen for this call sign. Um, like if I'm in Champaign, I'm probably going to be able to hear, like at least outside in the car with a you know mobile antenna, I'm probably going to be able to hear Bloomington fairly well uh, most of the time. But this one in Paris, which is about the same distance, is on the same frequency as the one in Bloomington. So I kind of never know which one I'm going to pick up uh, if I'm in the car. So you got to listen for the call sign. So that's pretty cool. Um, so that's that's another, you know, sometimes I, I will listen to, to the weather radio to get an idea. It's like, oh, well, I'm hearing one in Chicago. So then I go to my, you know, I go to my repeaters or try simplex and see if I can hear any repeaters in Chicago. Um, most of these are either 300 watts or 1,000 watts. If you scroll down here, oh, this one doesn't show it. They have another page on their site um, that shows how much power um, these are putting out. I know ours here in Champaign is 1,000 uh, 1, watts. And a lot of the smaller ones uh, for the smaller coverage areas are 300. Um, they don't even show it on here. 
Let me see if I can find that. Hold on a second. Okay, so I found this this one here. Um, so it does look like they range anywhere from 300 to 1,000 watts. There's actually one in Chicago that's 500 watts. Um, but usually the 1,000-watt ones are for bigger coverage areas, and then the, the 300 watts are kind of fill-in, you know, just to get to areas that are kind of on the fringe. But I use this to... Um, just as, as a guy, it's like, hey, I'm here in Indianapolis, so maybe I can bring up some Indianapolis repeaters or something, you know, I can talk simplex, but it's just another tool. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's it's a little higher than the ham bands being 162 megahertz instead of 144 to 148, but that's just another another tool that I use. Five. Here is a TV band scan map from uh, Rabbit Ears, which is a pretty cool site in itself. But um, this is an FM, or this is the TV map, and you can see um, there's various stations or various people that run these stations in their area to you know see what TV stations they are. And again, like in the spring and summer you'll get stations hundreds of miles away. So if I go, I actually have one. Um, I just have an indoor antenna. So I get really excited when I get stations outside of my area. Uh, let me see if I can find, here's mine. Um, but this is what I'm, it scans, you know, it, it runs a scan continuously, basically. It goes through each channel and sees if it can, what it pulls out, but right now I'm just picking up stations, you know, just regular normal stations in my area. And we got a couple over here in Decatur. Uh, I used to be able to pick up Springfield, which is way over here, but uh, there's a big building in, in between me and them now. So anyway, um, if you go over here, let me see if I can zoom in on this. Here we go. If you go to Ever Received, this is all the stations I have picked up with my indoor antenna um, over the past, oh boy, I don't know how long I've done. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't really give me the year on these, which is frustrating, but just gives me the date. So a lot of these will be in July or August. Well, there's a bunch in September. But, you know, this is just all indoor antenna. Um, so you can really see, like during the summer, um, you could, this, I think this is probably my, yeah, Hutchinson, Kansas. Um, but that's pretty cool that, you know, again, it gives you another tool that says, hey, I'm picking up TV stations in Kansas. You know, maybe I can pick up, I mean, obviously they run a lot of power, so <laughs> you're probably not going to get Kansas unless you have a big, you know, a tower with a good beam on it and maybe running a little extra power than your regular 50 or 100 watts but it's it's another tool to say hey I'm getting signals you know I'm getting TV signals out in this area so you know maybe I'll switch over to my ham VHF UHF and see if I can you know pick up something there and on that same note um, they also have an FM one and so here is the FM one. There's not as many stations using their 
their system on FM as they are on the TV modes. Um, but there's 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 one just north of me that has a really good setup, and he always gets stuff way out here. Mine's like buried in here. So <laughs> um, if I go over here to the list. Now, I don't know how many of these are accurate, um, but uh, I know a lot of these are because I was listening at the time. A lot of this is auto logger. So unfortunately, I don't have any recordings. It's just what the box picked up and reported to this website. Um, but some of the, I, I definitely have heard some of these out here during the summer, during um, sporadic E propagation. And these are, you know, I even at the time when I happened to notice it, I, I got a, I, I picked up just my little FM radio, just a regular FM radio, and I was able to get it on there too. So that was, that was pretty exciting. But I mean, obviously the ones in gray are in the past. It's not hearing them right now. So if you do last 24 hours, this is kind of, this is what I picked up. I, I get a Occasionally I get one in Bloomington and down here near Terre Haute, Indiana. Um, but as, as the spring and summer roll around, I tend to get a lot, a lot more, even, you know, again, F indoor antenna. So if you've got an outdoor antenna, you're going to get a lot of stuff. But again, when I hear this, I'm like, oh, I'm getting stations in Iowa. So maybe I'll hear something on the ham radio. But, you know, again, they're running... A lot of these FM stations on 50,000 watts and your normal <laughs> ham repeater or even your simplex is not going to be running anywhere close to that. But it just gives you an idea of what might be open. So if I hear Bloomington on 101.5, I might go, I might actually go back to my National Weather Service, go to, you know, 162.525, see if I can hear that which is running a lot less power, I mean, 300 watts, you know, that's that's getting closer to, you know, your ham. I mean, nor, most hams don't run more than 50 watts unless you've got an amplifier on VHF. But, you know, if I'm hearing that, then I'm thinking, oh, well, let's try, you know, let's see if I can bring up some repeaters or simplex. So, again, another tool. It's not really ham specific but it, it gives you a, an idea of what might be open and we'll jump right over here the next one um is the faa has um well as it says here uh weather observation stations at all you know tons of different airports around the country here so if i bring up illinois then i get a map of the various types of uh, and I get a table as well with the frequencies. You know, this is in the aviation band, uh, AM mode. Um, I mean, there a lot of them are in the lower part of the bands. Um, but it gives you an idea. It's like, okay, well, I'm in... Oops, that's not the one I wanted. I'm in Champaign, and, you know, can I hear 124.85? Hopefully I can. I can't indoors, but in the car I can. <laughs> Um, and if you had an external antenna, you would be able to, but, um, you could also, you know, you could scan the aviation band. And then when you hear one of these, you can look it up and say, oh, well, this one's in Galesburg, Illinois or something. And then look at it on the map and then, um, go to your ham repeaters again, and, you know, check your VHF, see if you're hearing, hearing any distant repeaters in that direction or get on simplex and call CQ, you know, so, um, just something, just something I listen to. I mean, these are, these are kind of continuously broadcast transmissions. So it's a lot easier to, um, you know, kind of scan for them or monitor them versus a regular, you know, you don't know if anybody's going to be talking on a repeater at any given time, but these, you know, with the other, the previous couple of sites we've looked at with the weather radio, that's continuous 24 7, 365. You know, your TV stations, most of them are on the air usually 24 7. There may be some that shut off overnight. Um, but, again, you know, your FM radio, probably going to be 24 7. And then, you know, your automated weather, 
it's automated. So, you know, those pilots need to be able to hear, hear those, whether it's, you know, 12 noon or 12 midnight. So just another tool to, to check out. So sticking with the VHF UHF theme, um, here's a list of, um, I believe most of these are, oh, it does say over here. Yeah. Most of these are uh, Morse code beacons. Some have uh, whisper embedded, but, uh, uh, on VHF, UHF, and a few higher bands, uh, there's some folks out there that have uh, beacons. So they, they broadcast 24-7 unless, you know, they take them down for whatever. But um, this is kind of a nice little list. You know, it gives you the frequency and then kind of what how much power they're putting out and what kind of antenna. And then you, there's a few on the 220 band, and then you got, 70 centimeters and then 900 megahertz you know you're then you go way up here and into, into the really high bands um, so if you hear these on your radio you know if I if I come up here and I'm thumbing through two meters and I hear you know I might hear this one in Minnesota you know so he's running 10 watts with a a small beam aimed kind of my way southeast. You know, I'm like, hey, I might be able to get some some VHF uh, ham signals, ham con ham contacts out of this. So I always like these beacon lists. Um, I don't know. Let me see if it says down here. Yeah, it says it, this is an updated list. So it, he's done it in um, in this you know a couple weeks ago from the time of this recording. So, you know, it's another resource to, to look at. So the next one I want to look at is the International Beacon Project. And this is, um, there's a little bl blurb about it. Um, it's on four different bands. No, five different bands. Uh, 20 meters, 17, 15, 12, and 10. So each one transmits um, once every three minutes, 24 hours a day, uh, 22 words a minute, does the call sign, and then it does, um, there, there are four different power levels. It's 100 watts, and then 10 watts, 1 watt, and 100 milliwatt. And it, as you can see, it kind of rotates. So, like you saw this one, VE8AT was just on 20 meters. Now, that station is transmitting on 17 meters. And in a few seconds, it'll jump down here to 15 meters. And it, they just keep rotating. So it's kind of like you know where they're, you know, you know they're going to be the next time. And there's, you know, you can either bring up this website. There's, I know um, on the iPhone, there's an app for, for this thing. It'll show you which ones are broadcasting. And uh, MFJ even has a, a, uh, like something you mount on your wall that lights up an LED when each beacon is transmitting. It's because it's, you know, it's pretty predictable since it's every, you know, every 10 seconds it rotates. Um, so if you hear one of these stations, then you know that, hey, I HF propagation on 20 meters or 10 meters is open to New Zealand or wherever, you know. So then you can start, making some calls or listening for other stations. So it's a, it's a really cool system they have. I believe it's, is it 18, 18 or 19 different beacons, but they're all over the world. There's a couple in the U S and then, you know, you can see where they're all at. You know, it's a nice spread over, over the entire world. Um, so this is yet another pretty cool beacon setup that you can use to hear where propagation is at your location. All right. So the next one is, uh, this is all 10 meter. This is a 10 meter beacon list. And this is updated pretty often as well. Um, let me see if I can zoom in on this. Oops. There we go. But this is a pretty cool, extensive uh, list of 10-meter beacons. 
um, outside of, well, I guess it does include this, this one here, this 4U1UN is part of the International Beacon uh, project that we just talked about before this website. Um, but there's a lot of other individual hams that have uh, their own beacons. Usually they're built between um, 28.2 and 28.3, I believe. Well, it looks like some of these go down a little further. But I think most of them are between 28.2 and 28.3 megahertz. And then, you know, this list kind of gives you how much power they're running, their antennas, uh, when the last update was or when they were last heard it. Um, but this is pretty cool because a lot of the time, you know, 10 meters right now is, is really hopping. So you're probably going to hear a lot of these individual stations and you can come to this website or this, it's actually a document you can download and store it on your machine. Um, but say you hear, um, you can either list, you know, zoom in on the frequency or you can, um, go to this website and see, you know, which one, where it's at or look up their call sign, I suppose. Um, but like this one's in California. So if you hear that one, this one's running a really low power. Um, so then, yeah, he's running 50, 50 milliwatts. So if you're hearing this one, you probably get good propagation to California. But um, this is this is just for 10 meters. But there's, you know, what is this, 486 or so? 485, something like that. So that's... That's a lot of beacons that you could possibly hear to help you figure out if pro where propagation is at your location. All right, the next couple of sites I want to look at are time signals. And the first one is WWV, which is out of uh, Fort Collins, Colorado, here in the U.S. And um, they run on multiple frequencies, um, 5, 10, 15 megahertz, and then a lower power on 2.5 megahertz and 20 megahertz. If you're hearing that, then you know you probably have somewhat decent propagation into, you know, Colorado at least. <laughs> but um, let me pull up a website. I'm going to pull up an SDR here and let you hear what these time signals sound like. Zero hours, 33 minutes, coordinated universal time. Okay, so that's what the um, WWV sounds like, their time signals. And there's um, a few radios out there that actually will sync... Um, to those signals, uh, I know Heathkit used to make one a long time ago that uh, that my dad had, and you just plug in your antenna to that, let it suck in the signal for a few cycles, and it would update an actual clock uh, with down to the second. So uh, that was pretty cool. Um, so that that's WWV. All right. So the other time signal I want to talk about is CHU, which is in Canada. And they operate on um, 3330, 7850, and 14670 kilohertz. And it's similar to WWV. It's just a, a little different. Uh, let me pull that up here. So that was CHU Canada. And, you know, again, that will help you determine if propagation of that part of the country or world, wherever you're at, um, is possible. So another website um, or another not really beacons, but um, kind of daily broadcast 
uh, Monday through Friday is the ARRL um, W1AW station. And as you can see from their schedule, um, they have various bulletins they send out. Uh, some are in Morse code. Some are digital, whether it's, um, let me see what they do. Um, RIDI and PSK31 and MFSK16. And then uh, it kind of rotates throughout the day. Um, I can't, I don't have anything for that because I'm recording this on the weekend and they don't broadcast on the weekend. Um, but they even have a voice, you know, voice bulletins. So that's another way, not only to see if, if um, you've got good propagation into uh, Newington, Connecticut, where they're based out of, um, you can also use it to, to learn Morse code. You know, they've got fast and slow code. So you could, you know, you get a, you get an extra bonus on that, uh, that propagation method. Um, but down here they have the frequencies. I mean, they've even, they even do it on two meters. I mean, you're probably not going to pick it up unless you live in that area or there's a massive band opening. Um, but you know, they go all the way to 160, you know, 160 meters, six meters, all the regular bands. So just another tool to kind of check out the bands and, and see what you're hearing. So the last site I want to talk about is the Voice of America Coverage Analysis Program, or VOACAP, I guess is how it's pronounced. Um, this has been around for years, but uh, it seems like recently they've really upgraded the graphics and the capabilities of this system. Um, I think it used to be a downloadable program. Oh yeah, I guess I still have it. Uh, looks like you can get it, get it for Windows and Linux, it looks like, but I'm not going to worry about that today. We're going to use the web interface and I'm, they've got one for ham radio, marine HF and 11 meters. So we're going to click on the one for ham radio. So there's so much you can do with this. I haven't even scratched the surface of it, but how I use it is you put your, this is where I'm at here, the red pen. And then here's the blue pen of where you want to find out if where, when and where, or what bands and what time of the day or night is best um, for that communication. So you can move this pin wherever you want. So if I want to say, okay, Australia, I can, I like to use this prop wheel. Um, a couple of things here. I'm going to go ahead and click on prop wheel. So it's not looking very good based on my settings here. I've got SSB and I'm, you know, five watts of power. Now you bump this up to a hundred watts, you get a little bit better chance. So you've got 10 meters. It's kind of good between 21 UTC and 2 um, UTC and then maybe a little bit on 12 but then you get over here um, like 17 meters at 1500 UTC might be pretty good and you can kind of follow the, the graph there but that's kind of a cool little way to visualize when you know how good propagation might be and what bands and times you would hear it on. And, uh, you know, you move this around. Let's just say we'll go up here. It gets a little better um, if you're running 100 watts. Now, what you could do, you want to do CW. Oh, yeah, 100, your 100 watts is going to go a lot further. Um, I'm gonna Let's go back to Australia here. Let's try this. Yeah, I mean, 100 watts CW, you're going to have... 10 meters at this time, it's really going to be better than trying to do sideband. But then down here, you know, you might be able to get all the way to 20 meters maybe. Yeah, here, it's got a 45% chance of making it at 1400 UTC. But even, you know, you go one step further, um, FT8, I don't, I probably wouldn't run 100 watts on FT8, but uh, that's up to you and your equipment. Um, but you can see it would get even, they're showing this would be even better on FT8 than, than CW at this, you know, time on 10 meters. And even if you go to a whisper, it really gets good. Um, you're getting these red, you know, you're almost 100% at some of these 
um, times. So like 23, 20, uh, zero UTC on 10, you're good. We got 75% chance over on 12 meters. And, you know, you get down here, you're, you're starting to even maybe get 80 meters, 60, 40 meters. So that's one, one way you can look at it. Um, they also have a chart. It's a little messy, but if you just hover over it, it, it shows you the percentage on each band at each, you know, the time is down here. Here's your percent of, a, you know, making the contact. It looks like, uh, what is this? 1600 UTC is your best bet going all the way down to, uh, 20 meters, uh, 20 to 10 meters. So, um, just another way to visualize that and, and you can get into all these different settings um, if you click settings you get you know the type of antennas and just all kinds of stuff like it's it's thinking we're using a two element yeah if you're only using a dipole using a quarter wave ground plane you know all this there's so many options so you can really narrow down um, the type of uh, setup you have and you know, this is just a, a forecast of what you might get. And this is just a, a really cool site. And I'm just touching the the surface here because I haven't I haven't even dove into all these other <laughs> options they have down here, but um just one um one really cool site to check out. Um this is more of a again, more of a forecast, but it gives you an idea that it's like, hey, I want to I want to try Australia. When are the best times? And then you can look at that, you know, pull like the wheel up and say, okay, well, if I've got, you know, say your QRP, you still might be fine on 10 meters. I mean, it's showing 81%, you know, 70, 60, 70 at these times. So, you know, you might make a contact on Whisper or FT8. And it gets a little, little less, you know, down the 60, 50, 60% there. But, uh, it gives you gives you an idea of of when and uh, where you might be able to to work some DX. So I think that's going to wrap it up. Uh, this is a pretty extensive list here, but I know there's other sites out there. Um, you know, there's the whole DX cluster thing, which some of these sources, some of these websites I showed, um, they use they use the DX cluster. Um, that could be a whole video in itself. It's a good good start uh, if you kind of want to see. Uh, what's out there, what's, you know, where where that signal, or if you're hearing a CW beacon or something, you can look those up. You can kind of get an idea on the VHF, UHF side uh, to see kind of almost real time how the band is doing and where it's open to. So if you have any questions about uh, any of these sites or if you've got uh, some recommendations for some other sites that I might have missed or didn't cover in this video, uh, throw them down in the comments and uh, I'll check them out and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you might have. So uh, thanks again for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. 73. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and make sure to ding my bell to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks again and 73 from K9SWX.